Hello and welcome to this week's episode of the Photographers Inside the Photographer's Mind. I'm your host Dan Jin and on this episode I'm joined by Omar Z. Robles. Omar is a Puerto Rican photographer now based in New York City. He's famed for his wonderful images of dancers situated in the hustle and bustle of New York City. But he's actually here today to talk to us about his latest NFT collection, which he sold on the NFT market. It's a street photography collection, a series of 25 images, and he sold that to several investors, amassing around about the equivalent of 200,000 US dollars. So he's going to talk to us about that, what that process was like, and beyond the money, what it means to sell a collection in in, in such a, a successful way. And some of the things that he did in terms of marketing to ensure it got sold. So you are going to enjoy this episode, guys. But before we do get into it, if I could just remind you to please subscribe to the channel. If you're watching on YouTube, then leave us a comment and hit a like. And also, if you're listening through Google, Spotify, or Apple Podcasts, then do ensure that you subscribe to the show so you never miss an episode. Right, let's get into it with Omar. Omar, thanks for joining me. How are you? I'm great. Doing great, a little bit. Uh, it's a little bit cold these days in New York City, but I'm, I'm doing awesome. <laughs> same, same in the north of England right now as oh, well. Um, I'm not not enjoying this. I've I've just got back from from Latin America. I've been in in North and yes. South America for a few years, and this oh, wow. weather is taking some adjusting to. You know, yes. so I'm, I'm I'm ready to leave. But we're not here to talk about the weather because you've you've got some very exciting news uh, which we will get into obviously with the the sale of your nft collection uh, for the series that you did called city which is street photography yes i think i think before we get into the the juicy part which is obviously the sale of the collection uh, if we could just start off by just kind of how the series city first materialized what what was your kind of motivation to start doing that work awesome yeah so, well, it's interesting because, you know, there's different types of series you can do, right? There's, there's series that you go on that there are, th- you know, there's a specific theme that you follow through, you study, you, you know, you, you, you go in depth and, and you choose, you know, one specific subject. Um, this um, series itself, it was not necessarily that research exactly in the sense that, um, you know, I've been, do- I w- I've been doing street photography for about, you know, maybe nine to ten years now right um and um and when i decided to put up this the series or as they call on the nft space you know collections um Mm -hmm. it was more about putting up a body of work that summed up some of the best moments of my of my street photography you know journey in a certain way but there was something very specific that i was looking for when i started calling them right when i started choosing which images i was going to use and the one thing that i wanted to make sure that went throughout the whole collection was that the whole series was that there were images that they had a very specific and visual narrative right mm-hmm. that the, um, the 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 people in the photographs were were engaged in some action or reaction, whether it was between themselves or, or with them and the city in, in, in one way or another, right? So I wanted there to be um, some some like ignition point so that when people saw the image, we're, we're not just like, oh, this is a pretty photo of a city with people around them, but more like, mm-hmm. oh, there's something happening there. There's an action, there's people that are connecting uh, and there's a narrative already, right? And that, you know, that is like the ignition point for the person to go like, huh, you know what happened here and then you know that that gives them you know the, the idea of them to run off with their own imagination um yeah because when i'm when i'm creating street photography that's generally what i'm looking for right i'm looking for 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 things that tell a story and my background is in theater um in my theater specifically so so i look for for those things that are very narrative in, in, and that and that are kind of theatrical to a certain extent so that's you know one of the other uh, elements that i look for when i'm creating street photography and then there's other things like again i kind of relay always to my theater background where sometimes if i see someone like wearing something interesting you know i brings me like the idea of a costume or something like that right so yeah so those are different themes or subjects that i'm looking for when i'm when i'm creating street photography so for this specific uh you know series uh when i decided to put together then it was you know that was the idea in mind really to 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 get those narrative moments in so that you know so that there's like a, a whole narrative that you can see about 
basically you know a life in the city you know for someone yeah. like i'm puerto rican right so for me when i arrived to new york for the first time it, it was all those things that kind of like jumped to my mind jumped to my eye you know when i started walking on the streets and seeing things that you're like oh you know like the the city life is you know it's right there in front of you so in puerto rico for example to give you contrast um people don't necessarily live in the streets you know meaning meaning the urban life is it's it's almost in inexistent you know people basically go from their homes to their place of work or mm -hmm. or wherever um in their cars and and then the only places that you see that people are interacting like that are maybe the shopping mall or you know or or very you know like or maybe the beach you know like some areas like that but there's no yeah. like city centers there's no like metropolitan centers that people just you know just just walk around right so Coming here, even though I lived in Chicago before, Chicago is kind of similar, but it's a little bit more empty. Uh, when you come to New York, it's just like, like in your face, right? So, um, yeah. in brief, that's what I was trying to, to go for. <laughs> no, I mean, I, j just to kind of, just a, a quick side question, obviously being Puerto Rican, loving street photography, does, it, does a part of you, is a part of you sad that you don't have the same kind of access to creating street photography as say you do in New York? Do you, do you wish it had a similar vibe or w would it be too far out of the culture for, for that, for it ever to be kind of an opportunity to shoot street photography as, as much as you can in say New York, LA and things like that? Um, well, I, I live in New York. So in that sense, you know, I am um, spoiled now that, you know, I can <laughs> literally walk out the door and start like, you know, you know, creating photographs right out of, out of my door in a way. Uh, but yes, you know, when I'm in Puerto Rico, even when I'm, when I go visiting, you know, that, that, that is a little bit of a, you know, a thing that, that I miss because the, the few places that I can go and create street photography are just, you know, uh, it's not that they're not accessible, but it's not as going out the door and taking photos, you know, and creating yeah. photos, you know, unless you live in those areas, right? If I live in Old San Juan, for example, I can just go out and maybe create a little bit. Um, but um, but it's, it's not just the same vibe. I, I'm trying to remember there's one photographer that I met in Puerto Rico a few years ago. I'm trying to remember his name now, but it's, it's escaping me. But he does a really good job at, like, at, at uh, creating some more, like, minimalistic street photography. Mm -hmm. um in puerto rico that it's more like on shadows and things like that that he you know that i think it, it works for 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 that kind of environment but but yeah you definitely don't have that close encounter with with folks you know um every day and that's one of the things that honestly i've, I've been also encountering as well meeting other you know street photographers in the nft space that are from other parts of the world or other parts of the united states even that you see like you know what? Like street photography is never easy, but in New York we have it. We have it much easier than let's say you know there's a there's a friend that I've met uh, through this through this world that curiously enough you know has my my own last name. His name is Joe Robles, and he's from okay. Houston. And he's like, yeah, <laughs> I mean, I go I go out and there's there's no people and there's no one in the street. So the 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 best chances that he has to create street photography are more like. Uh, conversational he you know he he then creates you know uh, portraits uh, most of the time because yep. because you know it, it's it's not as you know when you're in New York you can lift up your camera and start you know creating photographs and people you know it just kind of passes by like you know it disappears right but when you're in a place yeah. that there's no one and there's a one single person and you go that person is gonna go whoa <laughs> you know yeah so you can right you can but it but it's it's it's, it's much harder so um so i realize in a certain way how much privilege in a certain way we are to be able yeah. to create that type of photography in new york city yeah no it's uh you know it's 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 such a hub new york city for for street photography and yeah. and and when you were were curating you know city in its final kind of entity of and bringing all the images together i what's your thought process like are you thinking will this do well on the nft market or was it more of a case i want city to look how i want it to look regardless of whether it's an nft or a print or just for socials and once i've got to that point then i'll put it out as an nft or are you always thinking about what would do well on the market when you're putting it together um, no, not really. Um, but so there's two realities, right? One of them, I have to be 100% about, uh, honest about something. And it's that, you know, I'm faced to do this 
because of the NFT space in the sense that I never um, had the opportunity to say I'm going to go out and, and sell you know uh, this this you know something as a collection in this sense or a, or a series you know um, my work has more over the last you know five or six years has been more on the dance photography space where you know yeah. I, I'm still in the streets but I'm you know specific I'm working on something very specific um, kind of niche and and my street photography was kind of you know like uh, stuff that I've done for years but I wasn't really showing it i wasn't really working with it um but it, for me street photography has always been like my my anxiety releaser my my practice ground my my learning ground you know or training space or just you know just you know let my mind go out right so so yep. i always rely on street photography when when there's nothing happening you know even, especially more in the winter times and things like that that i cannot photograph as much dancers then i go out and, and create street um so but because of covid basically and i'm more literally because of covid because i got sick uh like the last few months so uh. i have been at home and and just looking at my computer for you know 10 days basically and i mean i started curating it before that you know i started curating the the the, the, the collection or the series you know a little bit before that but because of this two years you know that i haven't been photographing as much then i'm faced to like look at my work uh and start going through my through my you know through my catalog through my mm -hmm. files and and then i started saying you know what it's a shame that i have so much i think that happens to most of us especially because of social media in a sense we have such a backlog catalog of work that sometimes sadly sitting there and there's definitely you know now an opportunity to do something with it uh through the nfts so in that sense i wasn't looking for for something that would you know, work for the market, but I was definitely taking advantage that now there is a market, right? That there is a possibility yeah. that I can put this in the hands of people that will appreciate it. Um, outside of that, when it came to the curating itself, like I said before, I was looking for very specific moments that had a very specific narrative. And that, yes, I will go back again to say, I hadn't really seen many of that in the space before. I'd seen some of the street photography was more kind of, I'm, I'm, environmental street photography in a sense that it's more like a, a wider you know frame where people are there but there's not that encounter with the with the with the people in the photos themselves um yeah. so and i knew that that's something that makes my street photography mine in a certain way so i said okay i'm gonna i'm gonna lead with this that you know it's it's gonna be different it's probably gonna be chalking to a certain extent not chalking because of the material because that there's nothing particularly shocking but it's it's going to be different um yeah. and it's going to require people to think a lot or think a little bit more it's not just about how pretty it is it's about what's happening here and i'm intrigued you know hopefully so those were the things that i was looking for and then after that it was a matter of then narrowing it down saying okay now i have these and then the way that i thought about how it would fit in the format of the of the NFT space was kind of going counterculture and say, okay, oftentimes what I've seen people is to add as many, you know, images to a collection uh, yeah. to create volume. And, um, and I could have done that. I had like, I don't know, I started with like around 200 photos that wow. I started calling from. And then, you know, little by little, I started, you know, narrowing it down, narrowing it down with the help of some friends and, and, and people that I trust. And then even as what I decided to do was I decided to do a slow rollout. So instead of putting them all out at once, um, I decided to start, you know, putting them a little, little by little. Um, basically I started, I put out four and then I put out four more and then I put out, I think it was like eight more or something like that. Um, the total in total, they're 25, right? But even through the rollout process. And I did the rollout process that way for two reasons. One, for a very practical reason, it was like a financial reason because, you know, minting NFTs it can, yeah. get, can get expensive. <laughs> yeah, so because absolutely. it was going to be like several. So I said, okay, hoping uh, or assuming that they're going to start getting picked up, I'm going to start, you know, putting them up as they, you know, start getting sold. Uh, and that way, you know, I can offset the, the, the costs uh, of the minting. Um, but also it was kind of like a marketing reason as well, you know, to try to get interest in people and try to get, you know, like people like paying attention. And as I was rolling them out, you know, people wanted to see what's, what's coming up and, and stuff like that. So those were the two main reasons, but it also served as a third reason 
for me to kind of be like more more intentful about what I was going to put out. And then as I was seeing the response to the market, I realized, okay, I need to I need to call this one. I need to, you know, pull some stuff out that it's just not, it's not that I wasn't going to do well. It's just that I wanted to be more purposeful at the end of the okay. day and say, okay, you know, I don't need all this stuff. I just need the strongest and, and I'm okay with that. I, I, I don't, I'm, I don't need the volumes. I really need the support. I really need that the people that engage with this are really engaging and really connected and really committed to this work. Um, and that's why at the end of the day, you know, like I, I, I ended up, putting 25 instead of maybe 40 that was the number that I was playing with uh, and I think you know that taught me a lot and that's like a, a, a place that I'm very comfortable with now where if I'm ever going to do an, a new collection uh, mm -hmm. I think I'm going to play with that because a lot of what I've seen in this space is that people try to again put a lot more um, and I mean also realistically it's harder to sell 40 things than to sell 25 things you know in a certain way yeah yeah absolutely and it, it can it can also kind of dilute the strength of say 25 images yes. and everything you're saying you know with the marketing strategy with the the amount of images that you put out well you you were right because obviously these these have sold now um i mean if you can just tell everybody listening exactly how much that sold for if that's all right is that is that public is that public knowledge yeah, yeah. sorry if it's not no, no that's, <laughs> that's public knowledge that's that's one of the most interesting things about the nft space is that everything is public uh is public knowledge because the the blockchain information itself is meant to be public. it's out there so yeah. so that you know there's a lot of advantages to that you know when for example when you go to a gallery you know that from from a collector point of view you know they can tell you oh the last one of these sold for three million but it's maybe not true or maybe this the the, yeah. the, the buyer was like the you know the the artist brother or something like that or the sister right like uh they, that, that information is not always transparent so for for the collector you know there's it's always like a eh, kind of thing right but yeah. uh but in this space everything is it's visible and though there are ways to there are ways to trick the system where like people create you know alternate wallets and stuff like that but that's another conversation but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in the in the broader scheme of things it's visible right so uh, people can can know exactly and, and i also think that adds that adds value to the work itself because if it sells for a good for a good amount then you know people can appreciate that right yeah right, right, right. and then also another way that it helps also is that at least in, in, in foundation where it's the, the platform where I minted this and I saw this, um, it's a bidding system, right? So when something goes up for, for auction, um, then when you see more people bidding on it, you can also see that there was interest, you know, you can see visually, you can see, oh, you know, the, the, this, this, this photo or this, you know, collection or this person is causing interest in the, in the, in the, in the space. And maybe there's, that's a, a, another reason to look out for it. And then and the third thing is that also you can see who the buyers are. So yeah. if it's an important uh, collector, for example, that, that, or that has an important collection, um, then also that adds curatorial value to the, yep. to the, to the collection as well. So the whole collection sold in total for uh, thirty five point forty five ETH. Um, okay, I think roughly at the time because of the conversion, it was somewhere close to two hundred thousand dollars, more or less. Uh, so, so yeah, I mean, which, which by the way, sorry to interject, but like for for street photography as well, as you know, um, most street photographers won't even earn a fraction of that in a lifetime. You know, it's it's often been seen as the the genre of photography that you'll never earn any money from. Um, yeah. And there you are. So 200, around about 200 grand is, I mean, that's insane. Like what, what does, like, what's, what does that feel like? You know, what's going through your mind when you, <laughs> you know, if I'm, I'm going to be 100% honest with you, um, for me, it's the money. It's, it's important because I can assure you that even as a photographer in general, I've never seen that kind of money. Uh, yeah. you know, from, from my works, from my jobs and things like that. Um, it's more about the fact of appreciation. You know, you see that there's people that are, that are willing to spend these amounts on your work and mm -hmm. you feel like, wow, like there's something there and, 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 and you feel that, right. You feel like them, you know, it's like if someone is willing to spend, you know, like I think the, the highest one that sold was for, 2.65 ETH, and that was for a photo called Violence. 
um, and it was like a pretty, pretty uh, good uh, bidding war there at the end. And um, I think that's maybe that's 2.65, 2.68 by, I think it was like $4,200 at the time. I don't know, I can't do the math, but that's upwards of $10,000, you know, for, for that one image, right? Uh, and you see like someone is willing to spend this amount of money in one of my images, you know, they're committed to it, right? They're, and that's also something that I did purpose, uh, on purpose, you know, I priced them on a, 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 I started the reserve at 1.25 for all of the images, because again, I wanted people to be committed. I didn't want people to be like, oh, this is nice, I'm gonna get it just in case. Uh, it's something that, you know, accrues value afterwards and I can make a profit yeah. out of it. I wanted people to be like, I really love this image and I'm committed to it and I'm going to buy it because, you know, I like it that much. I'm so, you know, um, intrigued by it that much. Right. So, so for me, the, the money is more the support, you know, that, 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 that proof of, of people wanting to, to, to stand behind you and believe in you. And ultimately there was out of the 25 piece of the collection, there was 20 collectors. So that also okay. tells you that, that, that there is a broader uh, a broader community of people that were interested in the collection um, and uh, and that even a few of them collected you know more than one piece oftentimes what you'll see in the nft space is that if it's a, if it's at a very if it's at a lower um, price for example then just one collector will try to sweep as many images from the collection in a very uh, speculative way to see like if this picks up value afterwards and, and then that kind of reduces you know that kind of can strangle the, the creator in a certain way because then you have like one person that basically controls your market um, and in this case you know being able to have like 20 20 20 different collectors um, that's also like a, an important thing so yeah, the number it's good, but it means more support. And on the other side of the things is, is that I'm thinking about taxes and I'm afraid of that. <laughs> so, so right now, right yeah. now, uh, I'm, for me, the number is just like, all right, it's it's in a cold wallet. It's stored in a cold wallet. I'm not even thinking about it right now. Keep keep it in the crypto. Yeah, keep yeah. It in. <laughs> right now, and then we'll see what happens. Uh, and you know, you you can move things around to try to like you know keep the value of it so that if if crypto you know goes up and down, then there's ways you can move it to put it like on a stable coin that you preserve that value. Uh, so I've definitely done that but like but um uh, yeah the, the whole tax conversation is like <laughs> so am, am i right in thinking so let's just say in two years five years whatever one of your collectors one of the collectors then resells at a higher value is does nf for those that aren't fully on the nft train yet like do you still get kind of residual cuts of like sales after after the fact as well yes uh so basically the the smart contract which is the essence of what an nft is right what mm -hmm. what, what the person is buying is that certificate of, of authenticity uh of the image that it's you know the original image that came from the creator uh that's just a set of programming right like and and it what's it's programming the in the in the code is that um part of what's programming the code is the financial information of the creator which in this case we know would be like their their wallet, their Ethereum wallet. Um, mm -hmm. So every time there's a sale, also part of the programming is that there is like, it can be programmed to different amounts, but in on foundation, the default amount is 10%. So every time the, 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 the image gets resold, the creator gets 10% uh, back. Uh, so again, something that we've never seen in the traditional space before. I think there is in Europe and in other countries, and some other countries and I think some even states they're supposed to be like a royalty kickback to the to the artist but because it's not automatic and you can't yep. really tell always when there was a sale um, exactly you know it can just pass and you don't know it and you don't ever get that that money but in the nft space because of the 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 smart contract you know whenever there's a transaction everything is visible as i mentioned before so the creator can see that it was sold uh, and to whom it was sold and for how much and then you get that amount automatically um, um transferred to your to your wallet so again you know um, that's in perpetuity right so yeah um, you know like if i if i had children uh, or, you know, anyone in my family, if I pass, you know, like they can have this information and then maybe even 10, 20 years from now, 60 years from now, if that image is, you know, if those images keep getting resold, you know, they, they're still going to get um, that 10%, you know, in perpetuity. So, you know. 
So one thing that you touched on uh, uh, just, just shortly before is probably when people think of you or when people see an image, you know, of a, a, a dancer in, you know, an, in a position situated in, in the, 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 the urban streets of New York. We, we know it's one of your photographs. We know who, even before we look at the, the name, we're like, oh, Omar's posted again. And then, you know, be, you've been able to carve out such a, a quality style, a uh, high quality style, sorry. Does any part of you wish that that was what did well on the NFT market? Or is, do you not do you not mind it? Are, are you as passionate about your street work as you are kind of your more professional fa- uh, out there in the open work? Um, yes and no. In a way, you know, again, I've always felt guilty for my street photography work because it's always been like on the back burner and it's something that I really love and that I'm mm-hmm. really proud of. So I was really proud that this work found um, finally a place uh, and an audience um, and uh, and that I was able to, you know, really transfer or, or translate that, that message very well. So that makes me really happy. Um, the dance work is not, it's, it's not that there's actually, there's a smaller audience, but I've actually been able to also sell, um, I don't know, somewhere around eight to 12 of those images as well on the, on the, on the, nice. on the NFT space. Um, also for, you know, a considerable good amount of money at, to this point. Um, but it's been a slower role, I think. And, okay. but, and that's for different reasons. I think, you know, some of the collectors, you know, that I've spoken with, you know, they can recognize the, the aesthetic value and the photographic value of it and the technical value of it, but then they, they cannot necessarily connect with the, with the dance uh, side of things because they just don't have like, um, um, what to relate it to um, in their own lives. Many of the collectors yeah. in the NFT space, now it's, a, it's changing a little bit, but many of the collectors in the NFT space are people from the financial sector, people from the tech sector that, you know, that have been always into cryptocurrencies. And now this is a way that they can invest the crypto- cryptocurrency uh, in, a, in a way. And and th- a lot of them, they have had, you know, to, to, go through a learning curve about art about you know especially photography right like when i came into the space back in march most of the there was hardly any photography period yep. um and most of the highest selling works were more like 3d animations or just illustrations uh and things like that um so so the photography you know for us photographers it took us you know like a while to to get to put to lay down that 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 foundation uh, of knowledge of 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 culture in a certain way, um, and um, and it got to the point of now where we are. And I think street photography maybe it's easier for people to relate because we're on the streets. We can yep. see um, that message. We can see you know. Originally, what was started what started selling as photography was mainly um, landscape. Surprise, yep. surprise, you know, yep. landscape. Um, um, people are going to hate me for saying that, but it's just, uh, it's just life. <laughs> it's, right? true. It's, it's, true. it's true. It's true. And it's, it's normal because people can identify, right? Like people buy what they can identify with. So they can identify with a sunset. They can identify with a pretty landscape. They can identify with the stars. You know, people can identify that and feel, okay, this is, there, there's some aesthetic value to that. And, yeah. and I can understand why I want to, you know, why my, my spirit is telling me this is beautiful. Right. Um, yeah. Then generally in photography in general, uh, when you're encountered with a with a human person in the photograph, uh, with a human person in the photograph, what, a human <laughs> in the photograph. when you identify with a human in the photograph, then it's yeah. a different, you know, it's a different reality for the person, and then they have to face, okay, that person looks like me. Is this a mirror of myself? What is that telling me? Right, like all those, you know. Um, all those psychological battle that, that, that people can go through. Uh, so, so it took people a, a little bit longer, right? Uh, and yeah. when it comes to the dance, I think, you know, that there can be that, that bit of a battle that they're like, okay, but why is this person dancing? And, and one of the things that people have told me realistically is like, they don't know in the, from a technical point of view, they don't know how to, to relate to it. It's like, is that a 
like is that person is that a famous dancer why should i care oh, yeah. about this or is the dance cor- is, is the dance technique correct in this photo i don't know so yeah. so people have encountered that right um so i have been working now also as I did with the photography community where, you know, I, I work to create community to, you know, make, make the work visible at large so that, you know, my, my, my whole uh, thesis behind this was like, if, if you build it, they will come. Like if we arrive and we arrive in numbers and they start seeing photographs more and more and more, people will get used to it and people will understand it and people will start developing taste for it. And now I'm kind of doing the same thing with the, with the dance community where I started, you know, gathering them, building community, get them to, to, to talk amongst themselves, um, to start showing their work more and, and so on and so forth. And I yeah. think that we're going to get to that point uh, eventually. Um, so because there's now, you know, me as a dance photographer, but there's dancers now that are, you know, that I have been minting work and that have been creating something very interesting. So, Excellent. Uh, so, so yeah, Sorry for the long answer. <laughs> no, 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 absolutely. We, 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 we love plenty of detail here. So it's, it's always good to kind of, to get, to get into uh, the deeper side of things. And, and I'm just wondering, cause you said, you said with the dance stuff, you know, people are, people are trying to find their why for why they should connect to it. And, and they may struggle with that. Have you actually been able to speak to any of the collectors for the city um, collection? And have they kind of shared any reason why, 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 why that kind of, image or collection as a whole spoke to them and and kind of what made them invest as have you been given any feedback in that regard that you're able to share yeah yeah it's varied but the general the general um the general mindset through most of the collectors is that they found very humane moments humane moments that that talk to them about real human uh connection suffering uh, empathy. At the end of the day, you know, they empathize with with many of the images in, in different ways, and why it was important to you know carry that message through. You know, for example, one of the images that I uh, on the collection is called Healing, and there's this you know basically this. Uh, I believe there's two taxi drivers uh, that are, and then one of them is it's a uh, African. American. I don't know if he's Amer- African American because, but I know that he's African descent. Um, and then there's like an Asian man, um, um, and um, and the Asian man is massaging the other man, like right in the street. And it's not like mm-hmm. uh, you can see that it's not like uh, one of these, you know, like um, getting paid kind of massage in the street that they that, that they often do. I don't know how to express it, but it, you, you can see that it's not a hustle. That it's actually the one man is taking care of the other one. Like, yeah. And you can see there's like a very human connection, right? So you see the, 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 it's interesting, for example, because the collector that, that, that went for that photograph, he doesn't really collect street photography. I think he, he likes more, um, I think fashion photography that he mentioned uh, at some point, um, or other types of photography. But when he saw that, he said like, I just, I just, I just saw an image of empathy. And of, of people, you know, like having a real connection together and that where, for example, race was not an issue and 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 all those things, you know, especially in the, in, in the years that we've had that, you know, the racial yeah. conversation is very, it's been very strong. So he saw like, yeah, he saw like two people having a very human connection and that's what really intrigued them. Um, if you talk about um, maybe... Um, um, I want to save the best, the best for last, I guess, because there, there's definitely uh, several ones. Why? But um, there's um, there's reading, for example. There's this this uh, young uh, Jewish kid like reading what I'm assuming is is the Torah in the train, uh, and in a, in a very you know in a very solemn and and respectful way. Like you see him, like he's very into it. So again, that gives the person a, a point of connection of humanity of like how we search for a meaning, you know, since we're, since we're children, right? Um, yeah. And so on and so forth. And then there's violence, uh, which is, you know, one of the crown jewels of the collection, if you, if you want to call it, that is a photo of, of basically a scene of sexual harassment in the street. Not sexual harassment, but um, just the harassment that women go through every day uh, in the streets, yeah. you know, of New York and everywhere in the, in the, in the world where, like, you have this, this woman uh, walking in the street and then there's three gentlemen um dudes guys uh around her just like 
with their eyes, you know, like really looking at her and you can see. Is, is that the woman in the white outfit? Yes. Is, it, is it that? Yeah. 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 It's a great photo. Um, but and you yeah. can, and you can see again, the, the narrative in all of their faces, in their body language, you can see their intent. You can see her feelings about what's going on. Um, and, and again, it's a photo that, that there is a there, there, like you can really see like the message going through and, and, um, you know, interesting, um, the first person that, that, um, bid on that photograph was a, a female collector, which okay. I was very excited for because I can see, you know, okay, people are connecting with this in, in, in different levels. Right. Um, yep. and then, and then more people went in because then they, you know, they, they were really excited. They, they were really interested in, in the photograph and one of the collectors, the, the collector that ended up getting it, you know, he even, which I appreciated it as well. You know, he, he, he told me like he collected, you know, it's a collector that I have been developing a relationship with him for, for, for several, for several time now. Uh, he collected also one of the dance photographs before, um, and then he also collected one of the first images that I pulled out in the collection. And then when he saw this one, he really, you know, again, he was like really struck by it, but then he wanted to find like more reference. So he actually, uh, went out to some of his female friends or, or, or you know, people, female in his life that he appreciated. And he showed them the photo and he said like, I want to acquire this. Why can you tell me about this? And like, do you think it's important that I acquire this? And, you know, they gave him, you know, their point of view and they said, yes, you know, this is very important. Like, like this is a very important message. And, and, um, and, and yeah, like, like you should definitely go for this. Um, so, so again, seeing people getting committed to the work in that sense for me was just something amazing. I think, I think, yeah, just hearing you describe that, I can kind of see why like you say, the, the money side of things is great and all, but that kind of journey as a photographer, the validation that comes with it, the, 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 and this is why I love street photography. And I, in my opinion, think it's the best type of photography on the planet because it, it, it gets people having these conversations. You know, if, if it wasn't like people like yourself, Omar going out and telling those little narratives that happen on a daily basis, you know, would, would that collector have gone and had that conversation with his female friends? Exactly. Maybe not, you know, exactly. and, and it's, it's such a, um, yeah, it's such a, an, in, an inspiring kind of story in a way and away from the kind of headline, you know, 200,000 USD for a NFT collection for street photography. I hope people listening to this and, and taking it in a kind of really understand the true value of the craft and what it can do. Yes. Um, and I'd say to you as well, you know, I, I, I hope you're kind of proud of what you've done because it's, it's to, to take obviously a situation where you're, you're in isolating cause you've, you've got the sickness and you know, which we won't go into, but you know, we know how that is. And you've kind of turned that situation into a, a, a space to create something. You've put it out there, you've marketed it, you know, uh, strategically and, and with thought, you've not just dumped it out and seen what happens. And, and, and it's a great lesson to anybody who's thinking about going into the NFT market, thinking about doing street photography, struggling at home, you know, with everything that's going on, what, when you put your mind to it and what you can do that you can create something wonderful, both artistically from a human level and, you know, cherry on the cake, a nice chunk of money until uncle Sam comes and chats with you. But you know, it's, <laughs> you had to but, bring but, it up. <laughs> hey, only cause you did first, but, um, but before I let you go and, and enjoy, uh, the rest of your day, kind of what, what, what's next for you now? Like what, 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 where do you go from this? Uh, you know, I'm going to keep exploring the, the NFT space. Uh, part of it right now is to keep the conversation going around that, that collection. Um, I don't want it to die in the, or I don't want it to rest in just, just it being collected. I want to, I want to keep that conversation going. And also one of the, again, the collector that, that collected, uh, violence, you know, he, you know, one of his purposes to collect that image is he wants to make sure that the image gets displayed in a museum or a gallery at some point and it gets more attention so it's really Excellent. continuing the conversation with the collectors it's it's trying to you know to keep moving the the images um 
maybe to to you know it's it's interesting because most of the collectors are saying you know you have to pry these images out of my dead hands you know like they wow. they love the images and the work so much right but how do you keep the conversation going you know do do obviously you would want it to acquire value but it also again it can acquire value also through through more work that i'm going to be putting out right so but it's how to to keep engaging in that conversation so i've been um continuing to 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 talk with the collectors in a daily basis uh we are trying to you know host uh spaces um on twitter to talk about the collection and to just keep the conversation going but then yeah i'm gonna put out new work i'm gonna strategize on how to you know keep 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 you know growing in this space um yeah. and um and again you know for me it's very important I'm gonna, I'm gonna put out new work at some point for sure uh but right now i think it's also like important for me to pay homage to all those years that i've been you know busting my 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 behind in the streets and creating work both the street photography and the dance work um yeah and it's like uh it's it's honoring my past self and saying like you didn't do any of this in in vain um yeah. you know this work deserves like deserves to be seen and appreciated and it will be uh so so a lot of the the the, the work that i'm doing is very introspective really going into my archives really you know finding ways to to give a new life to that and in the meantime i'm doing work as well i'm doing new work i'm still going out and creating and and and, and, and such um but but i'm trying to play that balance so yeah the idea is to keep growing the market keep keep uh, uh and also keep you know keep helping the market grow healthier as well and, and that's part of you know a lot of, of what my mission has been since i got into the space is it's really to 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 help create that mindset of of um why why are we doing what what we're doing you know are we just doing it in a specu speculative way are we just you know throwing money around or are we trying to um you know have a real conversation about art you know and that's one of the things that i have been uh really um is, that, is the right word adamant or passionate about uh, passionate, you know yeah. i've been passionate about and and i think you know so far um myself and uh, and some other people that that have had like the same mission have been very successful at like really creating that 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 conversation excellent omar well it's a great story and it, it's one i love to hear about what i'll everyone knows who you are already but for anyone that doesn't i am going to be putting links down to where they can find you in the description and stuff like that so i'll set, send people your way and yeah i look forward just to seeing um where, where this goes and, and 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 how it keeps progressing and the stories it keeps telling and the impact it keeps having so yeah thank you very much for for taking time out of your day to come and have a chat with me and um hopefully we'll catch up soon likewise thank you so much i appreciate it Cheers, Omar. Cheers. See you later. Thanks again to Omar for sitting and speaking with me. I have no doubt that anybody listening to this has enjoyed. What a wonderful insight into the world of NFTs and the possibilities that can, that can emerge if you put your work out there on the market. Guys, before I let you go, just a quick reminder. If you're watching on YouTube, then please do subscribe and share the podcast and the channel leave a comment let us know what you thought of this episode will you go on the nft market have you already sold an nft let us know in the comments below and also don't forget to hit a like on the show same is true with google spotify and apple podcasts do ensure that you do subscribe i'm your host dan jinn this has been the photographers inside the photographer's mind and we'll be back again next week with another episode see ya